Batman 146, Legacy number 911. Oh, it's issue 911. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't even realize oh, no. that. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Chip Zarsky. This issue is my own personal 911. I'll tell you that much. Oh, jeez. Uh. Chip Zarsky writing with Jorge Jimenez on the art. Uh, yeah. So, where to begin? I, I guess. So, we revealed last time that this guy from Bruce's past that also trained Joker with his main stuff. Uh, is the warden of Blackgate right now, whilst Robo Zero NR Batman is out arresting mm-hmm. everyone very fascist like. Uh, the first like third of this issue is just narration from this guy, mm-hmm. the the therapist uh, slash warden. I, was, I think from now on I'm just going to call him the warden for you know short. <laughs> yeah, because he he gets the big bold in the 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 bubble. Yeah. He's, I had to yeah. call him the warden. It's just it's easy, it, 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 it's it easy to remember. I, I I can't remember his name. I don't and I don't care what his name was. So yeah, yeah. he's just warden, right? The first third of this book is him narrating, like just kind of like the backstory and how this all panned out. And throughout this, he talks about Joker always wanting to try and draw out Zero and R to draw out the the true Batman, as it were. And we get flashbacks during this narration to when Joker was wearing like his detached face in New 52 and mm-hmm. he basically found out about both Zero NR and Failsafe, well Failsafe specifically, from mm-hmm. Alfred un- when he was under the influence of Joker Toxin and I'm like, okay I, I-, I don't know if I, I think I like retconning this into the backstory but alright, yeah. there's that um, and then this idea that he learned from Alfred like a like a, what, like a hypnosis word for Batman. That this is a thing. I'm trying to I'm trying to see where that came up. Yeah, it, it comes up when he's he's explaining all this shit. Yeah. Because uh, because Batman goes into a uh, what was it uh, Arco Tenebris. Is, oh is yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and Bruce goes all oh my head uh, uh like yeah so it. it it's almost like Joker's had this like switch that'll make Batman zone out so he can get away. And I'm like, you're really retconning in that he's had this, he's had access to this for years. Like, I don't know. I just, this, I this like run it. conceptually is just constantly doing things that I hate and I don't yeah. like for the character of Batman it's, or the characters I, around him. Yeah. I wasn't over here pining for ties to death of the family all the way up to, you know, from R.I.P. to Death of the Family, up to all of this stuff. Um, and, yeah. was, and was it Alfred or was it the 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 doctor that gave him that? It's like he had learned about the Zern R oh, the, thing the, from Alfred. No, no, the keyword was, wasn't Alfred. The keyword was the doctor. Yeah. So. But even yeah. that, I hate, I hate that, yeah. well, Batman yeah. was being trained before he mm-hmm. was even Batman. This yeah. therapist implanted a hidden word mm-hmm. in his psyche that would turn them yeah. off. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I and we that. shouldn't be that surprised, because I, I can't remember how you felt about that issue of the night, but it was one of the weaker ones, I remember. Mm. You know, about all the mind thing, because it was been, you know, uh, Batman not feeling pain while he's Batman. And to me, that is very, uh, you know, kind of goes against the whole idea of Bruce becoming the symbol and all of that stuff. I, I, it's because I mean, he's I, putting I, himself on the line. I don't remember know? the issue, if I'm honest. I just yeah. don't remember it. But um, uh, that's, that's there's all... a lot of this. It's it's him sitting in the Zen poses. He's kind of just recapping it, Zadarsky, uh, for everybody right here, in case they didn't read that issue. Um, yeah. So it all builds up to, like, no, he's the warden. Uh, Zeranar's brought him in to be the one in charge of the prison. Uh, and Bruce, of course, is saying piss off whatever <laughs> like, I don't know. And, and then it's an actual prison it's not a prison in bruce's mind they're actually in black gate no no i didn't mean to suggest otherwise like yeah no but i was i was hoping this was going to be mostly in his head you know what i mean because that's where we've gone with this story so the fact that that uh, that uh kill oh, God, all these different versions of of bruce of of uh fail safe batman slash zern are Instituting his own will at Blackie on top of everything. It's well, a weird look. I mean, that's the big thing of this story is that Zero and R's being like fascist Batman to the point where all the other Bat characters, 
Except Damien at first, although by the end of the issue, even Damien's starting to give yeah. him a bit of side eye, like, oh, maybe this has gone a bit too far. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's, he's going around and just, like, throwing people into Blackgate with no trial and just sort of holding them captive. Technically, they have trial dates for the future, but he, it's all very much playing the mm-hmm. system to keep them out. Uh, you know, Babs and uh, Dick are talking to the Justice League about what's going on, about what to do. Is this really Bruce? Because they're still trying to deduce that. Is this really Bruce that's in the robot, or is it mm-hmm. something else? Uh, and I've not quite sussed it out yet. Um, I will say there's a bit of weird art on this page when they're talking to the Justice League that kind of stuck mm-hmm. out to me. Uh, it was just Babs in the top panel. There's, she looks like her body's like oddly bulky compared to her head, and it just stuck yeah. out because it's not really a Jorge Jimenez like regular thing. No, like, it it feels like I don't know if he was trying to like do like a sort of sultry in the t- tight t shirt thing, but it ended mm-hmm. up just looking kind of weird. Uh, it. it- it makes Barbara look far more curvy than she's ever looked. Yeah, but even you know? even her arm, for some reason to me, mm-hmm. just looks too bulky. Like uh, the yeah. one that's rested on the, the armrest. Mm-hmm. Right, that's what I mean. There, yeah. she's He's drawing her like she's Barda or Wonder Woman. Mm. And, and she's not, right? And it's not that Barbara's ever, like, small. Um, but, you know, she's a regular size uh, human girl or human lady. Uh, and here she looks like a big, you know, like a brawny type so yeah no it definitely caught my eye too yeah yeah but it's not like if, if it was barda sitting there i wouldn't think it looked, it would still have mm-hmm. that weird problem where the head looks a little bit too small compared to the rest of the body uh, mm-hmm. to me i think but again i mean unless he redraws it as barda then i wouldn't know if I, yeah. that's true or not i guess true but yeah they're talking to the justice league they try to figure things out uh batman's still in a cell with the joker and batman basically Goes in. So I thought this was going to be the rest of the issue because he did this whole page where he, like, he crosses his legs and he's like, "Look, Zero and R was part of me, and he has all my memories. So if I look into mm-hmm. my mind, maybe I can see his memories." And I thought that was going to be the rest of the issue was him mm-hmm. like going through these memories and learning something. Instead, <laughs> the the top of the next page, he's basically just like. Oh, I remember creating these robots, and he gets up, and it's basically he di- he now knows what the robots that are guarding the prison because it's it's all filled with mm-hmm. these like bat robots that are like the prison guards, effectively. Mm-hmm. He now knows their weakness, and I thought it was going to be it just it felt so easy. He sat down. There's two tinted panels of like working on a robot head with you know, mm-hmm. like in a POV shot, and then the very next page he's like, oh, I know everything now. I can now I can go fight them. <laughs> Look. I'm not a robotics expert, but I think you need more than some some line shears, a drill, a razor blade, and a glue gun to make robots, but that's just me. I mean, to you be know? fair, it's probably just off-panel, whatever the rest of the stuff is. Yeah, I know, but... It's a know, pretty these... narrow point of view. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. That said, I, I do want to give him his credit for the art here. The Batman sitting in that pose with all the shadows... And it's just black around him. There's no panels. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, the way that the lighting's hitting it and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, Jimenez's art is generally still pretty mm-hmm. good. It was just that that one panel really stuck out to mm-hmm. me. He's feeling a bit off. But everything else is still up to his usual standard, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so Batman's trying to do a prison break. He's hoping for a distraction. And this is when some of the, the bat bots are bringing in a uh, punchline and try to put her to her cell. So she mm-hmm. ends up being this distraction. Uh Meanwhile, we see kind of an example, and I don't mind this part of the plot. The idea that the fascist, you know, Zoo and mm-hmm. R is bringing everyone in, even people who arguably shouldn't be brought in. And mm-hmm. we get an example here of Harley Quinn being arrested, and she's like, "What? Well, I'm practically on the Justice League now." And he's like, yeah. "I don't care, you're Harley Quinn." Uh, and Damien seems relatively like okay with this. Uh, yeah, you know, he's, he's he's not speaking up anyway. Uh, Later on, he has some doubts, though, based on some of the things that are happening. Uh, but uh, Punchline ends up flipping a switch that opens all the cells. Although, I did at least appreciate that Batman's narration points out that all of the super-powered villains are all on a different floor. So this is just mm-hmm. all regular humans. So at least if we did get Batman yeah. beating the shit out of 70 people, at least it's all regular people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's... Which we know he could do. Yeah, he, Batman that's Batman loves head drama. Wait, it doesn't uh, actually... Vandal, and is that Vandal Savage there, too? I thought that as well when I saw that, but I'm going to uh-huh. assume not, just because yeah. I feel like they gave him a line of dialogue or something. Me too, because I see there's there's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the foreground, and then it looks like Vandal Savage walking up to him, and then it made me remember, like, well, where did that story go? You you feel like Zer and R would try to bring him in, 
you know, uh, for stealing his house. Well, it wasn't really stolen, but you know what I mean? Uh, well, but Zero nothing is ever really made of this being Vandal Salvage or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, didn't Gerard take the house back? Isn't did he? Didn't Savage get pissed that he's he's property has been taken back or something? I don't I don't remember. Ah uh, no, I don't remember the Vandal. This Savage is stuff. terrible for us. Like we should remember, but it's I do my best to try to forget some of the stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I I, I just don't care. Is the, the simple mm-hmm. answer. Uh, so the fight never actually really happens though, because a bunch of bat bots show up, mm-hmm. uh, and so Batman lets them deal with it. And then there's a, a human prison guard who's still working there, who holds a gun up to Batman, and Batman is like, "Oh, hey, you're still here. You're just doing your job. I get that." And the guy puts his gun down, and I thought, okay, this was a nice little moment. Uh, it's really basically there to show that uh, to pulling your heartstrings, because a few pages mm-hmm. later, this guard is seemingly dead. Um, at the hands of uh, who is it that's killed him? I thought it was the warden actually, because I think the warden's on the uh-huh. phone in this scene. Because the very okay. next, the, the next uh, panel on the next page, or well, the next panel, but on the next page, uh, that's one of the things mm-hmm. you see. Uh, it may not be though, because all you see yeah. next to the body is a couple of feet. So it could, yeah. it, it looks like it's like sort of smart trousers, whoever this character's wearing, mm-hmm. and we see the warden on the next page, and he's clearly well dressed, which is why mm-hmm. I thought it was him. But I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, my assumption is is he was killed by the warden for daring to let Batman go. Like this was like a retaliation kind of thing. I mean, maybe. I'm not sure. I I took it that it was uh, as I'm looking back at the pages. Vandal Savage is around the corner listening to him, uh, and then when Batman goes, the next time we see them, we see that guard. He's on the ground in a pool of blood, uh, and it looks like the trousers are they are a little bit frayed. Uh, and, obviously, yeah, you're probably right. I just never noticed Vandal Savage on that yeah. previous page. Well, so, that's the only reason enough. I remember that it stuck out is because he's in the center of that page, and then we see him there again, and then not again. You know? I mean, Vandal Savage is mentioned in this issue, but it's never mm-hmm. in any of the scenes that this guy with long hair, who probably is Vandal Savage, is. Like, he's never... Like, they never draw attention that that's him. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, fair enough, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Zero nr has got like a an Amazo uh, robot that mm-hmm. he's working on, and this is this is the thing where Damien's sort of starting to give him the side eye, like, hmm, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Maybe you are going a little bit too far uh, with some of this stuff. But yeah, uh, Nakano's pissed. Uh, Mayor Nakano. Because yeah, the the actual city isn't very happy that Batman's just taken over this prison mm-hmm. and is throwing people in there with no uh, like you know justice method or system. And uh, Superman does go and talk to Zero N R, uh, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Okay, you at least have Bruce's memories because you remembered where we first met." And they actually drop an editor's note here for uh, that world's finest two part uh, mm-hmm. that we had a little while ago. Um. And as this is this conversation's happen, and Zero and R's trying to justify what he's doing, uh, that ultimately the, the the plan is to take all criminals down. And Clark's like, "Oh, but at what cost?" Yada yada yada. As this is playing out, we silently see Bruce with some civilian clothes on, uh, getting into a truck and mm-hmm. leaving the city. Uh, he actually gets out of the city. What he's planning to do when he gets out of the city, I'm not entirely sure, but that's what the cliffhanger mm-hmm. is. Uh, so, yeah. It also, Zero and R gets all, you know, big shot with uh, Superman says, oh, you'll yeah. try and stop me, but you'll fail. Because Batman yeah. always wins, which I'm sure you love that line. <laughs> I just, the whole the whole part of that thing, too, is is we're supposed to doubt that Superman believes that Bruce is actually dead. You know what I mean? So the fact that uh, you think that Clark would put it together pretty, pretty quick, you know, uh, for for this. So when, when we get to there, I wasn't even focusing on the Batman always wins. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the second half of the issue is nowhere near as bad as the first half. I no. just, the second half, plot-wise, like, is fine in terms mm-hmm. of, okay, Zero and R's putting villains that are not necessarily deserving of going into Blackgate. Mm-hmm. He's just throwing them in. Uh, the city's upset at this. Batman's family's upset at this and they're trying to figure out what's going on because clearly he's not acting like he normally would, right? He's clearly going above and beyond what he normally does. That stuff is fine. Superman and the Justice League also questioning it, also fine. Uh, 
it's just obviously the status quo here is all built around the idea that we have this uh, Zoo and R stuff going on, which I don't really like. The first half of the issue, though, all the stuff with the Warden explaining mm-hmm. how all of this has been building up by retconning in these details into, like, you know, before Bruce was Batman to when Joker was doing stuff in Death of the Family to the Penguin, like, faking his death and uh-huh. all that stuff. That half of the issue, and at any time Batman is with Joker in that cell... I'm just annoyed. I'm just, I'm yeah. just furious at like what the conceptually we're doing here. Uh, th- yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. Not, not to parrot everything that you're saying, but I, I agree. Also, I hate when they constantly bring up killing joke. I know it's easy for the artist to want to draw. Cause that is an iconic, uh, image of Joker in, in the hat and the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. And I mean, to be but fair, it, doesn't, it, is, it, it doesn't add to the story here anything no but to be fair it's not just killing joke though it's a page where it's like a smash of like mm-hmm. five or six different joker classic moments you've also gotten beaten jason todd with a crowbar and a couple yeah. of things you know it's, it's not just the one so at least i get what they're going for is just that here's all the the prime big joker moments that you would think of yeah no and that's fair too i just i don't know i just feel like we don't need to be constantly be hit over the head with all of those uh here uh, no, I mean, I get what you're saying. You're saying mm-hmm. it's like the perils falling. We're sick of seeing Joker in the yeah. hat at the door. Yeah, I get it. Yes, that. you know. So, um, and what, what's that, that bottom one supposed to be uh, with all the people smiling? Is that just a, a random Joker attack? It's literally page one. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I assume that's just a random Joker yeah. attack. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, any, everything to do with the warden, I'm just... I, I just hate that. I hate the whole power of the mind with Batman type thing because it, it it comes down to the lazy argument of, well, if Batman has enough time to prepare. And it's just like, bro, you're not, that doesn't make it, there's no conflict in that story. You know what I mean? So if here, both Joker and Batman have trained the, their brains to do whatever, that's not a lot of conflict. It's, I mean, that's not even the part that annoys me. I, I just, I hate, the idea that this is specifically stuff that was trained, but more than mm-hmm. anything else, I hate this idea that this character has been retconned in via the, the previous miniseries, and mm-hmm. now we're finding out that Batman had this psychic off switch that anyone yeah. could say at any point throughout his entire career as Batman. Mm-hmm. Like, just piss off. Like, no. Like, this yeah. is just annoying. I hate retconning stuff into the character's past. It's such a lazy, dramatic device that so many writers do. And it pisses me off constantly. And it's probably at its worst with major comic book characters because they've been around for so goddamn long. That it, the longer the characters have been around and the longer it's been since we've moved on since their early days, the more annoyed I'm going to be when you say, hey, this all happened back in the early days. We just didn't know about it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the longer you're going and the more you do it, the bigger a sin that it becomes. And we're at the point with these characters now, with Batman especially, like when you're in certain stuff like Ghostmaker, you're in certain stuff like this therapist character and this kill switch, the <laughs> psychic word. I'm just like, no, I, I, I just, I don't like any of this. So, I mean, I'll give the run this. I always have something to say. I'm always mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> There's always some passion, at least. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I'm always a big fan of the the shirtless Batman with the cowl on, though. You know. So we got <laughs> we got that cool, you know, tease of a fight scene with that um but yeah i don't know man i don't i don't know who like i know who the story is for but it's not for me i guess uh because it's it's coming down to because batman and i don't trust Zdarsky into being able to to land the story in a way that's gonna feel like all this was worth it i don't i just i don't think that's the problem though I, I, I think you could give me a pretty good story that kind of relies on Because Batman. It'd still be very good for lots of different reasons. This has way more wrong with it. This, there's way more going on here that's not working. Mm-hmm. So I need to know what your Because Batman story would be, though. Maybe we don't have to talk about it right now. But I want you to <laughs> think know. about that. And I want to know how that would work. Well, the, the, like... It's all about how you handle it. It's all about how you do it. Like, it, mm-hmm. if you build up to a because Batman moment that feels justified, then I, I think it could it could be very fulfilling, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, Jed. 
Uh, I mean, well, it depends what, you, what you're defining as because Batman. And I don't even know if this is boiling down to because Batman. I mean, that, that's what Zuranar thinks. Zuranar is the worst of them, so he thinks because Batman. <sighs> Yeah, but we're also the whole point of the night was was low key because Batman. But I felt like in that story, well, we got to see the trials and tribulations of Bruce Wayne, and so we have the human connection there. And like here, we're doing all the stuff with the brain stuff, uh, all the stuff with the brain teacher, and it just uh, again, it just comes off. There's no, I don't know. It's like when you talk about magic and you you like stories with magic in them. If we understand what the rules are, right. Them just pulling in a, you know, that, that keyword that flips Batman off, like you're bringing up. Yeah. That really wasn't established before. Well, yeah, but I, what I'm saying is, is that none of this is yeah. because Batman, though. I think, mm-hmm. I think you really dislike when it happens with Batman, so you've mm-hmm. used this as a term to just explain when you don't like mm-hmm. something happening in Batman. But I think this is something that cool. all comic book characters can be guilty of. I think all mm-hmm. comic book stories have this problem occasionally, uh, where... Mm-hmm they'll just have the character be able to do something and mm-hmm. it, it's frustrating but I don't think that problem is specific to Batman no but like again if this was Superman and we get to these things and you know where where Superman can just do things because Kryptonian physiology I don't necessarily like that either with Batman it's a little bit different because it's become it's become a lazy way out for writers you know again it's the whole preparedness thing Batman can do anything if he's prepared and we get so many stories that, that in that way where, where it's like, how would have Bruce well, known okay. certain things are coming? You know what I mean? Like, well, what's the, because Batman in this issue then? So, so for me, it's, it's here. It's like you said, it's, it is the Zern R aspect of it. I just don't know how, I don't know how Zadarcy is going to stick the landing with how he has set up Zern R. Right. And it, and it's, it's coming up as because Batman, that's why he's being able to do all these things. He's able to take over Blackgate, right? Despite everything else. Um, and it's like, there's no wise. There's no like Batman was able to talk to the mayor and be like, Hey, just let me do this. I have this new form. I'm not going to fight with the police. Well, anymore. I feel like this isn't because you Batman. No, I feel like this is just plot holes that you're talking about. <laughs> this is just, but, but why, but why is it, continuing the story then because it's but it's like oh well, no, we no, just no, have to accept it, but that. that because batman ha- is when mm-hmm. there's something that he shouldn't be able to get out of but it's like no because he's batman he's figured out a plan for this this isn't mm-hmm. what that is this this all this zero and our stuff just really convoluted stuff it's not because batman right, necessarily. But, but that's not what that scene with superman says right because he goes okay so the black gate thing was was always planned right you know and did then, he say that i don't remember him saying that but yeah he does he he tells him let me get to that page so I'm not misquoting. Uh, da scanning, scanning, scanning. Like all, all I'm, all I'm really trying yeah. to say, Matt, is that sometimes I think you're simplifying it too much by saying it's because and, Batman thing. And that's fair, but here in this issue, it got it. It came up because here I'm looking at that page now, where you know he, they're they're talking about uh, he's talking to to Batman on the roof, and he goes, and the taking of Blackgate was that uh, always your plan as well? And uh, Zuranar goes, it is necessary. Can you hear it? The press conference is happening right now. Um, and so, yeah, he just, he low-key confirms, like, this was a plan of Batman's deep down in, in the dark recesses of somewhere, right? Well, it's Zuranar's plan. It's not Batman's conscious mind. I mean, at this point, you can't say Zuranar, like, well, we've clearly just separated them as personalities by mm-hmm. this point, right? And Zuranar's had his this, own plans for years. So if this if this gets rid of the because Batman stuff, because that's all the Zern are, then okay. I'm okay for it. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at yeah. all. I, that, because Batman's just a bad bit of writing that will come up whenever mm-hmm. a writer uses it. This, this is not going to solve or make anything worse. What you're describing right now is that you don't like the Zern R concept. I don't think this has anything to do with because Batman. I think oh, no, what you're but... saying right now is that you just don't like the entire concept of Zern R. No, because there are parts of Zernar that I do like. I like that, that again, failsafe. There's, again, and that's what's so frustrating about Zdarsky's writing since he's taken over. There are pieces in here that I like. I hate the execution of them. You know, this goes back to, I, we love the idea of Batman creating a, a Terminator, right? I, I don't like the idea of that Batman Terminator completely taking over Gotham. Right? And so, and then this goes back to even in that first arc where Batman manages to survive falling from space you know 
And so that that's has been with us the, this entire this entire times that Arsky has been writing is he falls back into these things uh, into of it. And again, I, I, I just up, don't think these are the same thing. I think I think him, see, I do. him surviving from falling through space is very very different to what you're talking about right now. The idea no, that- because you said you set up no because you set up that because Batman is him, you know, figuring out a way out because he's Batman, right? And that was that was brought up to showcase the the stuff over to Zer and R, correct? I don't know what you mean. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. So so the whole reason, if we take this all the way back to the beginning, right, and it goes from fail safe, and he he does the whole fall from space, and he survives. What was the overall point of that to show? Right, the fall I, from space I, that. The well, chain links that go. Was there a the point? I don't know if there was a point necessarily. Yeah. It was just well, maybe I, a cool issue where you got to see him flying through the atmosphere. Right, but I do think that became that a a piece in the Zernar story of it all, and I still think that it's not handled particularly well. If, if that's not what you're picking up on, and I am, well, I, mean, I don't think that's necessarily a well told story. I mean, I agree that it's not been handled, but I just don't think mm-hmm. that these complaints about Zernar having these plans and enacting them. Has it anything to do with because Batman? I think that's just a conceptual problem with Zero and R and how it's been utilized by Zarsky mm-hmm. in this story. Mm-hmm. But the idea that Zero and R had plans to do all these big things, and you know, obviously, yes, technically Zero and R is part of Batman, mm-hmm. kinda, mm-hmm. but it's also been treated as a separate entity, especially in this run the entire time. I don't think you can have anything that Zero and R is doing as, as an example of because Batman. Okay, I, I, I'm I'm over the conversation then because it's just going to keep going in circles. Because I do feel that because I feel like because Batman is the is the, the 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 worst aspects of the character that I don't like, and that's why I don't like them. And and I feel like that's what Zernar is representing, right? And I just don't think it's it, like nothing in the story. Like I don't know where the story is going to go. That's going to remedy a lot of this, you know, with Bruce taking off at the end of the story. Like, what, is he just going to make some big triumphant return? You know, like, like we've well, seen I, a million times before. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, but you're moving on to a different, like, that's, that's yeah. a whole, that's a complaint about where it might be going, though. That's got nothing to do with this, the, this, the debate we were just having. <laughs> we're veering away from it. And I, right. I realize it was probably not a final solution to it, but that's that's not adding anything to it. I th- Like, maybe this is a difference in definition, but I think because Batman, yeah. when it's, when I bring that up, it's a very specific type of thing. It's usually... Something like, you know, Batman surviving something like falling through the atmosphere. Like he's just ready for it somehow. He's able to do it, right? Now, if you if if he knew he was going to be going to space in advance, and mm-hmm. he was in like a, some sort of like space suit mm-hmm. or something, fair enough, whatever, mm-hmm. right? You set up the pieces, page. right? It clearly defines that he could have prepared because he knows what's coming. Right. That was all just him improvising, and he's cut off. And don't get me wrong, he should be cut off guard sometimes, and seeing mm-hmm. how he tries to make Ivory's way out of situations mm-hmm. should be part of the fun. But when you make it so ridiculously like over-the-top and unrealistic, there's a disconnect. And then that's when it feels like it's just because Batman, because they just can I think all this stuff with the, the plot and Zoo and R and everything he's doing, I think it's bad rating, I think it's bad concepts. Yeah. But I just don't so, think it fills into that. So you don't that. think Zer and R overtaking Blackgate is a because Batman? No, I think it's just a bad plot. Like, I don't see, because I don't need to see <laughs> all the, the, like, I don't need to see all of that stuff. However. Well, Matt, look at it this way. In the context of this run, where he's uh, already taken over the city. So taking over a prison should be piss easy. <laughs> yeah, but again, then why is the mayor so pissed about all of this stuff? Because he's done it by force. He's not done it with. Like, he's not made deals to do this. He's just done it by force with his robot army. Yeah, see, and that's where he, he's, a, he's effectively taken the prison captive. He's, 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 right. he's, he's all the prisoners are effectively his and hostages. By, and so, and by all means, though, Batman is indeed doing this, and he's just he's created robots from scratch, right, to yeah. take over the city and take over Blackgate. So that was that's been a plan somewhere, whether it's Zernar or Bruce. Well, yeah, that, this is just a, a general comic problem, though, of like yeah. how much stuff these characters have been doing in the background. Like, right, but I'm still believe. saying, yeah, I'm still saying this. This boils down to because Batman 
And, and, and I, there's not. I, I don't, don't think it like, does because I, I yeah. think this is equally something that I could see being badly written for any other character. Is this type of contrivance? Is the, I, this is just contrived writing? I don't yeah. think this is specifically yeah. under that label. I, I so comic writers out there, you give me a flash version of this, please. So we can see if it if it's any different or no, not. No, no, we had that, Matt. It was yeah. called Joshua Williamson's run. <laughs> Look, oh, yeah. We've had it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stop asking for more bad I, comics. Oh, my God. I just remember. See, again, this is where I, I forget things. <laughs> I believe we coined the term because Flash during Williams's run. <laughs> Well, that's that, that, and that actually adds to my yes. point is that it's not yes. a specific Batman problem. It, it's True. it's something that just happens with all characters. I think you're True. just more sensitive to it with Batman, yes. so you 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 moan but about it more. <laughs> I still maintain that this this Zern R stuff is it, it boils down to me. You don't have to agree, and we can move on. <laughs> okay, that it boils down to me uh, that it's the problem with because Batman. Okay. Yes, I I wouldn't put it under that label clearly, but yes. we we could we could move. I guess we're ready to read the book. I mean, hell, if nothing else, at least oh that debate God. was an interesting conversation because I don't think yeah, it was. And, and it we was. don't hate each other, you know. It didn't get heated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Connor. Come on now. <laughs> Come oh, on. dear. Um, all right. So, we, I, I'm, I'll know. give this like wonky art aside. I think the art is the highlight. Uh, so that that uh, enough pushes it to a five uh, that makes sense uh, I, I think I kind of more or less agree with that five out of ten sounds right uh, yeah. but yeah definitely not enjoying it but mm -hmm. at least there's something to talk about true 